talk about engine turning and straight line turning on a Rose engine. They're both a beautiful, beautiful, aesthetically nice way to decorate metal pocket watch type designs. You could also do wood, engine turning on wood. There's a lot of beautiful things you can do with a small guilloche type cutter or with a small diamond to do these beautiful type pieces of work. And what you really need to do is you can use a cross slide to do all this work. But in the days of old, they'd use a slide rest. So the easy way to make this beautiful hearted slide into a slide rest from a cross slide is to just pull two screws out. If you just take the two screws that hold this in uh, feed screw, just un tighten them and just take it out. You can make a small fixture to sit on top. And now you're turning your hardage cross slide into a slide rest. And it's beautiful for doing guilloche work. We've been doing it this way for about three months, and it works great, and it's effortless. First thing we want to do with our straight line chuck and our piece in the middle is we want to make sure that we are aligned with the center line of the part that's going to be in the machine. And a quick way to do that is just to have a piece of scrap metal or a piece of wood with a point coming out of it and just look down and make sure that if you're going to use the rose engine part with the rock that you have the same amount of rock on one side of the cutter as you do the other. And if you're going to use a diamond, like you have in your purling tool for doing your guilloche, you want to make sure that it's right dead in the center if all you're going to do is straight line. So you want to make some sort of alignment tool to make sure you're right on the money. If you have a piece of scrap stock similar in size as your project, what I suggest you do is buy some Dicom steel blue layout fluid and paint it on your surface. Put this in your chuck and do all your setups on this, even a test run of the pattern that you want to do. Then take it and put it on your belt sander, sand it off, and do it again. Make sure you can do your pattern at least twice before you put an expensive piece of jewelry or a piece of wood with a lot of time in it or money into the chuck so you know exactly what you're going to get when you're set up is right on the money. All I'm trying to do at first with my scrap piece is to see that we're getting an aesthetically pleasing design. Once I know I'm getting an aesthetically pleasing design, I'm going to make sure that my stops are set correctly and that I'm in the center line of my piece. Once that I know all of that, you can see that it doesn't take much effort to go around a part. Now, you can see that I'm stopping in the same center every time. All I've done is take my tail stock, turn it around, and tighten it exactly where I want on my part. And when it bumps up, it's my stop. It's my stop for my center line, or I can use the riser, uh, which also comes with part of the Sureline products. I put a riser down here, so now I have a stop on the up, and the down motion, especially if I have a border. A lot of these old parts that I've made here, I have a border on the edge. So I want to stop my design on the border. So all I have to do is use my tail stock for my stop. And sometimes you can't use a tail stock for your stop. You have to look. And when you see the line, touch that line, you can stop. You can actually feel your cutter going into the previous design. It does though take some time to get used to that type of skill. It's a feel that you can get. And once you get it, you'll always have it. It takes, it's effortless to push that cutter and make that small chip. Now, using a diamond, there's even less effort, but it's a different look. Not a bad look, 
Not a better look, just a different look. And some of these projects down here were done with a diamond, and a few of them were done with this guilloche cutter. Now, guilloche cutter is really just a quarter-inch tool bit like I have right here. Uh, carbide works better than high speed, and uh, some type of rubber on the other side so you don't go too deep. And uh, it really works well in these quick change tool post holders. Now this particular fixture that's in here right now allows you to dial in a fixed uh, rubber on this side over here. Some people call it a guide. The guide is set three thousandths back from the tip of this cutter right here, which is a qu quarter inch carbide inserted tool bit. This way that tool bit only goes into your work two or three thousandths each time. So it won't dig and it won't tear. And you can see by our gauge over here, you don't have to go every two degrees, two and a half or five. By going any amount of degrees you want, you can have a preconceived idea of where you want those degrees to break out. So like in this piece right here, my center was down here and all I was doing was turning this piece about every 10 degrees till I got over to the side went back to the center, and then it did it to the opposite side. So you can modify it by going 10 degrees in the middle, 20 on the sides. You can do with it and play with it as, as much as you want. And it's all easy because it's all done right here with the detent. Now you can do it in different ways, but the detent works really well on this straight line modification from Linda White. So if you ever have a chance to try doing guilloche work. It's something that's a little off the beat, beaten path for woodworkers, but it's easy and it's fast. And something you can do with it is you can do guilloche work in the round mode like this on this piece of domed brass and insert this piece of domed brass into the lid of a vessel. Uh, you can also use a diamond on wood and it gives you that design. It does a beautiful work without chipping the wood.